What you need to know about the Grand Prix Australia The Australian Grand Prix returns this week after a three-year hiatus, with F1 cars returning to Albert Park on Friday. Since the last edition in 2019, a lot has changed, both in F1 and in the world as a whole. The Australian Grand Prix was cancelled a year later as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, which also prevented racing in Melbourne in 2021. Aside from the pandemic, the F1 landscape appears very different from what it did in 2019. Since the last race in Melbourne, a team other than Mercedes has won the Drivers' Championship, New races have been held in Qatar and Saudi Arabia, others such as Imola and the Netherlands have returned, and new races in Miami and Las Vegas have been announced. A major reimagining of cars and wholesale technological changes have also been implemented, as has Albert Park itself. Then there is Australia's own Daniel Ricciardo, who made his Renault debut at the recent Melbourne Grand Prix. Since then, he has raced for Renault for two seasons before switching to McLaren for another year when he won the first Grand Prix in 2018. Needless to say, F1 and this part of the world have a lot to learn. Everything you need to know about this year's Australian Grand Prix, including session times, track changes and previous winners, is right here. What happened the previous time? We have to go back more than three years to see racing on Melbourne streets. Valtteri Bottas overtook Lewis Hamilton at the start to lead the race into Turn 1, and he did not look back from there, winning comfortably. It was also Daniel Ricciardo's first race since leaving Red Bull at the end of last year. However, Ricciardo's Renault debut was a disaster, as he lost his front wing on the grass of the main straight at the start of the race and retired on lap 31. Lewis Hamilton finished second to complete a Mercedes 1-2, and Red Bull's Max Verstappen completed the podium. Changes in the track. For this year's race, the Albert Park Grand Prix circuit will be transformed into something never seen before. The most noticeable change is the removal of the chicane at turns 9 and 10. Instead, it is now a straightaway from turn 6 to the sweeping turns 11 and 12. Other changes have been implemented in an effort to improve the racing at a track that has historically seen few overtakes each year. Turns 1, 3, 6, 11 and 13 have all been widened to allow for better passing and wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat. Meanwhile, the entire track has been surfaced for the first time since it was laid in 1995 for the inaugural Melbourne Grand Prix. The changes, according to Australian Grand Prix Corporation CEO Andrew Westacott, will improve racing around Albert Park. Westacott said, lap times will be 4 to 5 seconds quicker than they were in the old spec cars with the old track configuration. You want to reward aggressive driving and penalise poor driving and we think that the changes we have made are going to achieve this. I think it is going to be the most spectacular racing we have seen for decades. This is Albert Park, but not in the way you were used to seeing it. Melbourne first hosted a Formula 1 championship race in 1996 and in the quarter century since then, the street circuit had outgrown the sport that had tempted it to relocate all those years ago. Overtaking was excruciatingly difficult on the repetitive medium speed track as strategic options had become stale. In 2019, a strategy was devised to revitalize the track and bring it up to modern racing machine standards and the unexpected pandemic pause provided Grand Prix organizers with an opportunity to maximize the upgrades. The headline figures for the projects completed late last year are deceiving. The course has been shortened by 23 meters and two corners, the old Clark chicane at turns 9 and 10, have been removed. Other bends have been expanded and their combers have been changed. But in this case, the whole is better than the sum of its parts and there is a lot of hope that the new Albert Park, together with the new generation of vehicles, will restore the Australian Grand Prix to its former glory. Why all the changes? It's a beautiful circuit, but it's always been quite narrow and tight, and therefore quite tricky to overtake, Daniel Ricciardo told the Australian Grand Prix. The Melbourne Grand Prix circuit, conceived and built over 30 years ago and hosting its 25th Grand Prix this weekend, is a bygone era. It was designed in the aftermath of F1's quest for greater safety during the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix, as well as the subsequent push to reduce speed. It is why the track, which is still a street circuit and hence vulnerable to walls near the border, lacks a long straight and is mostly broken up by chicanes and medium speed turns. It was not such a problem in Melbourne's early days as a host city when the cars were vastly different from what we have come to expect. The 1996 championship winning Williams FW18 weighed 595 kg and measured around 3.5 meters long and 1.6 meters wide. Red Bull Racing's 2022 Challenger weighs at least 763 kilograms, the minimum weight, with most teams heavier at the start of the season, and is approximately 5.7 meters long and 2 meters abroad. 
Simply said, today's F1 car is massive. It is just that the track was not built for it. Worse, today's F1 machinery is significantly more aerodynamically sensitive than cars from the 1990s. They do not enjoy following other vehicles too closely, and with the Albert Park track being so narrow and one line, passing was incredibly tough. In actuality, F1 statistician Sean Kelly calculated only one pass for the lead in the race's history, taking pit stop strategy and the race starts into account. What is unchanged? While the intended effect of the improvements is striking, and the track itself remains recognizably Albert Park in all the qualities that made it famous in the first place, its semi-street character has been kept, with the walls remaining as close as possible to the road to keep the pressure on the vehicles. That will be especially important early in the weekend when the new surface will be the least grippy, and mistakes are most likely. Except for the speed-inducing broader apexes, the first and last sectors retain a lot of their original flavor. To extract lap time from the small spurts from corner to turn, mental attention will be required. What do you think of the current Australia tracks? Leave your views, questions, and thoughts in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.